Morning there, partners. How's everyone doing? Welcome to Duty's Daggers. I'm Kevin, and there's no cut and test video today because, um, well, don't really have any knives to cut test right now. I'm kind of all up to date on them. Uh, I got some knives coming. Not, I think one, only like one or two knives coming. I'm kind of cutting back a little bit on the purchases lately. I went a little bit nuts with it recently, and um, so I'm having a knife sale to kind of make up for some things. But um, I thought today I would kind of go over my EDC, what I carry um, at work every day. Uh, haven't done it in a while, so I figured there might be some new folks out there that would be curious to know. So let's, uh, let's go through it. I'm wearing everything, or I have everything on me that I carry every day. Um, obviously the, the knife rotates, but I'll tell you kind of my, my three or four, uh, you know, go-tos for the last month or two. So let's start with the knife. Today, I got something new, something I'm absolutely in love with right now. That's the TRM Shadow. Um, I got this about a week ago and I'm really falling in love with it. This knife gives me a feeling that I haven't felt in a while about a knife. Um, it's, it's love. <laughs> it's that feeling when um, maybe you've been, uh, been dating somebody for a couple weeks and you start to feel a little something more. Yeah, you know what I mean? A little something more. You start thinking, man, am I, do I love this person? You start thinking maybe, what would it be like to get married to this person? What would her name sound like with my last name? <laughs> That's how I'm starting to feel about this shadow here. It's fucking good. Really, really, really good. Um, I have my, my full review coming for this, uh, but I'll just go over really quickly some things I love about it. Number one, the blade. Um, this is really good 20 CV. Um, it's so, it felt so good in the cut test video to finally feel some good 20 CV. Um, this is the sharpest factory edge I've ever seen, period, on a knife, ever. It is ridiculously sharp. Um, very thin blade stock. This thing slices like, it, it, it just, it's a, it's a mega, mega slicer. The Ergos are amazing. This is Contour G10 that actually is thicker towards the spine and it thins out slightly towards this edge. It just feels really good in your hand. Very good choke up spot. Lots of cool milling, like on the pivot. Back in here, there's an inside chamfer on the inside edge here. Um, I put the O-rings around the thumb studs and um, kind of just gives uh, really good traction on the thumb studs. It's not the snappiest uh, flicker ever. You know, it's a crossbar lock. They just, they typically aren't. Um, but it's snappy enough that it doesn't bother me. And uh, actually with the O-rings, it kind of gives me a little bit more uh, grip on the thumb stud and I can fire it out a little bit uh, faster. Um, it's just an amazing knife. It really, really is. You can tell that uh, it was assembled and made um, with loving hands uh, by somebody who's really into knives. Um, so this has been my, my main carry, but some other knives that have been in the rotation is my Spyderco Shaman in 15V. That's been a heavy, heavy uh, user recently. Um, the 15V Manix too has been there a little, little bit as well. I've kind of been carrying the Shaman a bit more since I got it uh, than the Manix too. Um, the Axio Gear Shift OTF uh, has been making it in the pocket a lot. I initially wasn't really quite sure if I was an OTF guy. Um, when I got that knife, uh, when I first got it. Um, but some of you guys convinced me not to sell it and to give it some real pocket time um, and kind of just see. So that's what I've been doing. I've been carrying it uh, a lot recently, probably a total of like five days this past, in the past like two weeks. Um, and it's growing on me. It, it's, you know, I didn't know if I was an OTF guy just because, I don't know. There's something about just manually operating a knife that's kind of fun. Um, it's a little bit less fun when all you do is just flick a switch up. I think that's kind of what it comes down to. Um, it's a fantastic knife. I literally have no complaints about the knife itself, um, besides the lack of a sharpening soil, but that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about adding one in possibly. 
Um, so it's not that, it's just, I don't know if I'm an OTF guy, but it is growing on me. So those are kind of the knives that have been in rotation. Now I always carry a second knife as well. And that rotates um, somewhat, not as much as the primary carry, but it's always been either one of my um, Ohio River Jacks. I have all three blade shapes and I kind of rotate between those. I have the spear point, the sheep's foot and the worm cliff. Um, probably the sheep's foot and worm cliff get the most pocket time. Just because I like to have, as a backup knife, I like to have um, a Warncliffe or Sheep's Foot blade shape. Um, because really what I'm using my backup knife for is kind of smaller utility cutting type tasks. Um, so I like to have a Sheep's Foot or Warney for those, uh, for my, my backup knives. Um, also the Kershaw Launch 10 has recently been in the rotation. That's a really nice kind of, almost like a, I don't know if you call it like a hawkbill or Something like that. It's like a curved hook shaped blade that's been really good for utility cuts. Um, Spider Co. Make B makes it in there. Um, today it's an Ohio River Jack and I got it in my Northwoods Leatherworks slip. Whoopsie daisy. I got Northwoods Leatherworks uh, slips for all my Ohio River Jacks. He does great work. And today it's the spear point actually. Kind of mixing it up a little bit. Um, this is the um, Ohio River Jack in jigged titanium and M390. Um, you get these at traditionalpocketknives.com and uh, if you're interested you can use my code DUTY10 and get 10% um, off on these babies. Really nice stiff walk and talk on this. This is the spear point like I said. It's actually the sliciest of them all. Um, not by a whole lot. They're all pretty slicey but this one just had a slightly thinner measurement behind the edge. Um, just really great action. You can hear it. Really great. It's um, it's not a small knife. I can still get a full grip on it. Um, you know, especially the, the Warren Cliff and Shears Foots. They're just so good for little utility cutting tasks. But this can absolutely slice. I did a full cut test video actually with the Shears Foot version. And it can, it can do everything that my primary knife can do. Uh, it's just a slip joint. Um, designed um, by um, Austin at uh, Traditional Pocket Knives and made by QSP. I can't remember if I said that already. Uh, it's a great slip joint. Um, I'm not like super duper into slip joints, um, but um, these I think are great. Good materials, quality build um, for only around 145 bucks, 135 uh, if, you my, if you use my code, because I think they're on sale right now. Usually they're like 165, 155, or 150 with my code, um, but they've been on sale a lot recently, so go check. Um, there's always a link down in my description uh, that'll take you there with my code. Um, in there as well so that's always in my pocket or usually in my pocket and then I always have a multi-tool and uh, I recently upgraded to the Leatherman Surge uh, for years I carried a Leatherman rebar and I still have it but uh, I recently upgraded to the Surge mainly because I wanted to have some tools accessible from the outside. It was kind of the main thing. Um, the rebar served me very well. It's smaller, a little bit lighter duty, but man, it never once broke, nothing bent on it, nothing broke. Um, I just wanted a little bit of a heavier duty one and plus the tools from the outside. And there are some kind of improvements on the tools in general. Um, so I'll go through the tools very quickly. We have a plain blade accessible from the outside. We have serrated blade. These are all locking, by the way. We have a um, uh, interchangeable T shank right here. So this uh, this slides over, and you can replace this tool. I have the file in it right now, but um, it comes with a wood saw as well that you can put in there, and anything with a T shank you can put in here. So there's a lot of options. That's a really cool feature. Um, and then we have the scissors. Great scissors, pretty big. Uh, and that's what we got on the outside. It's a big pair of pliers. This is a big multi-tool. This is about as big as like your regular pair of pliers you have in your toolbox. It's big. It took me a little while to get used to it. They're much heavier than the rebar. Um, but I don't, it doesn't bother me the weight on my belt. Um, I wear a belt, so I, you know, I don't, I don't notice it. Um, we have an awl and two sizes of flathead um, drivers or pry tools on this side. And then over here is the interchangeable uh, 
bit, but I actually lost it. So I, I ordered some more, they're on the way, but this is where the interchangeable bits go. They're two-sided, so you can flip it over and you have the, um, the uh, you know, uh, Phillips and regular um, in right in there. And then we got the can opener slash bottle opener. So full set of tools, heavy, heavy duty pair of pliers here. I love it. I really, really love it. All right. I also always carry a flashlight on me. And uh, someone was making me making fun of me, making fun of me for this recently. I don't know why, but I carry the Streamlight wedge. Um, I don't know why people were talking shit about this thing. I don't know. It's it's freaking awesome, dude. I have to charge this thing only like once every three weeks. It is ridiculous how long this thing stays charged. I mean, I don't have this on for extended periods of time, but I use it a lot. Almost every day, I'm shining this into something. And uh, every three weeks I charge this, it's insane. Um, there's a regular mode right here. I think it's uh, 350 lumens. And then if you boost it up here, it goes to a thousand, um, which is nice. I like. I just like the switch, it's nice. Um, I mostly like how it carries. It has like a regular pocket clip uh, that you'd see on a knife on it. It reminds me of the Benchmade pocket clip. Um, deep carry, it just sits right in your pocket, so easy. You know, it's it's longer and sort of, well, it's not super wide. It just carries really well. It just sits right in the kind of back corner of your pocket and I don't notice it's there until I need to pull it out and use it. Um, it's aluminum. I've kind of uh, scratched in some random scribbles uh, through the aluminum coating. You can tell this thing has got a lot of wear and um, it's still going strong. Really like it. One of these days I may upgrade, but um, for now this is really does everything I need it to. It charges right back here, and um, I just put tape on it because, um, you know, it sits in my pocket like this, and uh, there was a bunch of, like, metal shavings and crap getting inside there, so I just put a piece of tape over it, and since I don't need to charge it for three weeks, I just leave that on there, so, until I need to charge it. So, that's the flashlight, the Streamlight Wedge. Now, the watch. I usually wear an Apple Watch, but I don't wear it at work because uh, the sparks get on the, the face and um, just creates these little divots and it. it's it's very annoying. So this is the watch I wear at work. It's a uh, Timex Expedition. Uh, pretty cheap Timex. I think it was like, uh, sh crap, like 25, 35 bucks. Um, I like it, man. It's got a leather band. It's kind of... Uh, you know, it's a little classier. You can tell I need to kind of clean up the face because that, that spatter has been getting on it. I don't know if you can tell in the video. Um, aluminum, obviously. Um, let's see. 50 meters, uh, water resistant. Um, and dial lights up. tell probably not but the dial lights up you can kind of see it right there um, I think it's a great watch uh, I think it looks good and um, I don't have to worry about it getting banged up you know I'm constantly I'm always reaching into little places you know with my hand getting it banged up so cheap watch so I don't have to worry about uh, anything happening to it my wallet is from Lancelot leather um, you can get this on uh, EDC Roundtable website. EDC Roundtable website. This is the Lancelot Leather. He calls it the strap wallet, I believe. Because there's this strap on either side that kind of serves as a little pocket for cash, cards, whatever you want to put in it. I really like this wallet. Um, for the longest time, I was searching for a wallet that I really liked. Um, I tried those minimalist wallets, like the Ridge style wallets with the, the two pieces you know kind of uh bungeed together um i tried some other larger leather wallets from um open sea uh, leather it was good but it was a little bit too big for me um and then i got these these this this wallet and i love it man i, f I think i found the one um it's easy to get the cards out and that was kind of the, one of my main complaints with usually these style wallets like hard to get the cards out but what he does is he leaves this open right here just on this edge so you can kind of peel this back and um, get to your cards really easy 
So I really love that. Um, I wasn't sure at first. I thought maybe this seam down here would kind of, I don't know, break if you're constantly kind of bending this down. But really, it's it's totally fine. It's absolutely fine. I've carried this for every day for, I don't know, three or four months now. Um, none of the stitches have ripped anything. Uh, you can tell I burned a hole in it right here, actually. That's from a, an ember that fell in my back pocket. Um, but it's completely fine, dude. I really like it. It holds, let's see, one, two, six, seven uh, cards. And then I have like four or five business cards in here. It could hold more. Um, but that's what I carry in it. Like I said, you could carry cash or whatever in these little strap areas out here. It's really good. I think it's about 60 bucks. Um, keys. Look at my keys real quick. This is just a little homemade uh, leash. I clip this onto one of my belt loops and then the keys go right, drop down right in my front pocket. Um, so how I have done this, um, I, I've lost keys a few times with like a carabiner system and um, I said never again. So now I get these little, look like the number six. These are called, these are from Night Eyes. Night Eyes, these clips. So the key, let me get it off. The key or whatever you, you want to uh, secure clips in here. And then it clips down into the secondary area down in here. So it can never get out of this, out of there. And then you can clip this onto your central ring. Like that. So this is um, a aluminum key bar. I recently upgraded to the, the full size key bar in titanium. Um, I was using the key bar junior in aluminum before. Uh, it carries less less keys and this, this I like much more. I like titanium. I have six keys on here right now. It unlocks everything on my truck. I have everything locked up, my toolbox, my pipe stands, my the, um, my uh, welding leads, everything's locked up. My house key, garage key, everything's right on here. So when I need a key off here, I just, you know, this is still hooked up to my belt loop. I just pull it out of my pocket, pop this off, open up, snap it back on. Same for the other module. The other module is my truck key mailbox key and um, an Olight, Olight IR2 EOS. This is the best little keychain flashlight I've found. This is a special edition uh, orange one. You just twist it, get to a low setting, twist it again, get to a high setting. It's actually pretty bright for such a little guy. And it's rechargeable, so you twist that out. This pops open, recharge it. Um, it's small, don't even notice it's there. Best keychain light that I've found. So, drive my truck. Turn it off when I get home, pop this back on the ring, put it back in my pocket. Nothing ever gets lost, it's always right on this loop. So that's the system I found to not lose anything. Lastly, um, I carry writing utensils because I'm a welder, a fabricator. I always have a soapstone uh, holder. This just carries um, a soapstone, which I use to write on, write on steel with. Uh, it's a little dispenser thing with a, a clip on it. And then I always carry a fine tip Sharpie. Um, this is the best way that I've found to make very accurate markings on metal. Uh, they make like welder's pencils and things like that, but you, you're always sharpening them and they're just not as accurate. Um, you know, you will kind of ruin the tip on one of these after a couple weeks of using it. Um, but this is the best thing I've found to make just really accurate measurements on, uh, on metal for uh, making cuts or whatever you're doing. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's it. Got this bracelet that I made. Um, this is actually uh, three pieces of twisted up um, eighth inch welding rod, or maybe it's three, th yeah, it's, it's a 332 inch welding rod that I, um, I put in a clump. I put one end, in the, one end in the vise and then one end in my drill and I just twisted it. Twisted it all up and then formed it into this bracelet, welded the ends so they wouldn't unravel and uh, made a little bracelet from it. Um, I really love it. I made one for my dad too that he never takes off and um, I just really love it. Um, if anyone wants one, um, I can make you one of these. Um, I don't know what I would charge, but it wouldn't be too much. Um, I just think they're cool. It kind of reminds me of like a, a Viking armband kind of. So that never comes off. And um, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. A little uh, yeah, 20 minute video, not too bad. 
Um, full review on the Shadow coming. I have a lot of really interesting things to say about this. I have another TRM coming too that I ordered. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with TRM right now. Uh, which is why I need to do a nice sale because I wasn't expecting to make that purchase. But we did it. Um, that's it. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like the video before you head out. I'll see you soon. Love ya. Adios, dude.